You are now listening to Feeding Off Each Other. To take it back, back, back. Let's wow. go. We're Ooh. in. Spicy. Another one. Welcome, 2023, first part of the year. Oh shit! Here we go again. Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> Jason. Jesus Christ. I'm back. Jason. Are you sick? Yes. What's your uh, sick level? <laughs> uh, no, 0. 0.5. I don't think I'd so get anyone. Sick. Yeah, no, I don't think I'd get anyone sick now. Mm-hmm. But I still feel it. It's in my bones. Yeah. I can yeah. hear it in your rasp. Yeah, I got I got the rasp. I mean, <laughs> I knew you were going to get sick. It was just a matter of time. I was waiting oh. for your annual Christmas sickness. Yeah. No, it was funny because I listened to the <laughs> podcast, obviously. Um, big fan. Big, huge fan of the pod. <laughs> Top chother. I'm a huge chother. And uh, yeah, you, were, you, were, you guys were talking about my sickness. and Sick. How sick I was. And yeah, how... Um, I think, you, Matt, you were saying, like, I would disagree and I would probably deny being sick all the time, especially during Christmas or something. It's a bit foggy. No, I didn't say during Christmas. I just, I said, you you get sick, like, once or twice a year and I brought that up in the past and you said, no, I don't really get sick that often. I don't remember that conversation. No, I don't think so. I would fully agree. <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely do. Oh, Jason, <laughs> you're so funny. <laughs> that guy sounds sick, too. <laughs> 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 No, and it's usually around Christmas and New Year's, and uh, I was, like, thinking about it as I was sick as fuck on Christmas, and um, I think I've only, like, spent one out of, like, the last six or seven or eight Christmases with people, because I've just been sick the whole time. <laughs> that sucks. That's yeah, all right. But, uh, yeah, no. I, <laughs> At least I you don't bummed. have obligations. Wait, does your girlfriend yeah. count as people? Uh, she leaves usually. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as as in this year as well. <laughs> You've got like mistletoe up and you're doing like the arms behind your back, fake kissing. Just sweating <laughs> profusely. <laughs> yep. So. It sweat's a natural lubricant. Yeah. But now I'm doing better. I can be outside. I've done some stuff. But I still feel, I'm still. <clears throat> yeah. What What flavor of sickness did you have? Not COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, I te- I tested yeah. and uh, he had diarrhea. <laughs> not norovirus. Diarrhea, <laughs> which is apparently going around right now. It was just a flu. I, th- I think just straight up flu. Which I don't think we 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 filmed that night ride video, and I yeah vehemently don't think I got vehemently sick. vehemently. It's vehemently new vehemently? year new yeah. year new words. <gasps> well, okay. Daddy, chill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, do you I, vehemently de- disagree? I don't think I got sick from that, but right. I think I got worse because of it. Because I think you gotta get like germs. So, what do you think you got sick from? Just the grocery store, like no, 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 no. Store. I think you're, I think you're wrong because I think we're always taking in pathogens, and then it's intense stress, like lack of sleep or whatever, which is what pushes you over the edge. So, if you hadn't done that, your body might have been able to fight it off. Mm. Otherwise, we would be sick, like, all the time. Mm-hmm. You're wrong. If there's any doctors that listen to the pod, for one, come on the pod. Well, there's a reason why, like, after, you know, a lack of sleep for, like, one or two nights or, you know, going and riding your bike in the middle of the night in the forest will make you sick. It's like yeah. the thing that was going to make you sick was already in you, but that's what pushed you. Yeah. No, no surprises. That was a gnarly night. Yeah, it looked pretty <laughs> gnarly. Cold. Yeah. You guys had frosted eyelashes. Frosted tips. Frosted tips. <laughs> yeah. All the tips were frosted. <laughs> so you guys were wearing puka shell necklaces. You had the frosted tips. And we just got so sick after that it ride. So, so sick. sick. <laughs> How are you guys' Christmases? Jason, you spent yours alone? Yep. <laughs> Sweating. Did you did did you give yourself something, uh present wise? Uh I watched the uh entire Lord of the Rings trilogy in a day. Just nerd pretty wow. sick what it's so fucking good <laughs> i don't think i've watched any since i saw the return of the king in theaters i saw it in theaters too we watched jingle all the way after our uh mm. our po- oh, last yeah. pod running down all the movies yeah that's a good that's a good movie yeah it's it's fun it's kind of cheesy like the the effects at the end are really cheesy it starts off like power rangers too also i learned that the child actor from that movie he 
became like schizophrenic and just a downward oh, spiral for that was guy. it was it Sadly. jake was it jake lloyd the kid that was in star wars Is yeah that the same kid? yes yeah. yeah yeah he had a tough anakin go. yeah yeah pretty sad didn't he get like severely bullied from being yeah. anakin yeah yeah it was really bad because everyone kind of blamed him for being bad but he was like nine i mean at that age it's <laughs> kind of not his fault <laughs> what was bad the acting uh, or just the movie, the pe- writing and people. Well, people hated his performance in uh, *Phantom Menace*. Okay, um, but you know, the writing was bad. Like the dialogue writing. George Lucas is a really bad writer of dialogue. Brooke was pretty upset that Arnold Schwarzenegger was the main star of that movie. She said, "If they, if he wasn't already famous, why would he be cast for this movie?" But I think it's because he's like, it's like an action figure. He's like supposed to be like the superhero. But I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of weird just to have that random guy as the dad. Like, blah, blah, blah. that's my impression. There's been complaints about, not complaints, but people have brought up the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger will just get plopped into movies and he'll be like, hello, my name is John Smith. I am an average uh, husband and father. I am built like a tank for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't have that physique without working out like two hours a day and like, they're, the characters he plays sometimes like that wouldn't fit into their lifestyle. We watched the b- behind the scenes after too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it was like a really old. It was host- oh, where just, can you see that? Uh, on YouTube. Oh, okay. just, I, I usually do that. I type in a movie and I'll type either BTS or B roll. Mm. You ever do that? Yeah, B roll for sure. And B roll is just like clips that are bts but it's nothing's edited and there's always like a frame of black in between mm-hmm. why, why is that the st- st- like the template to b-roll I'm like what is that it process? must be a carryover from it's, film i would think yeah it's just like in a way they assemble it so that they can see the differentiation between Scenes. shots no but it's not b-roll it's not like shots from the movie it's behind BTS. the scenes yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways i know exactly I, I what you're it. talking about though i, lo- I love uh, pulling back the curtain mm-hmm Great movie though. <laughs> I never with the other one that you recommended. I never got to it. I can't remember the name. Which one? And I'm far too lazy to go back to the old podcast <laughs> to find out what it was. What was it? Was it a Christmas? Yeah, movie? Yeah, it was a Christmas movie. I think I asked you like three times in that podcast what it was. I kept forgetting. <laughs> it wasn't about I, time because maybe. I was talking about that, but that's not a Christmas movie. Maybe I don't know. You can't watch Christmas movies anymore. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> wait. I only <laughs> watched over. I only watched Die Hard. That was the only one. It's a great Christmas movie. People argue that it's not, and it's super annoying. It's on Christmas. It's a Christmas movie. It, the, the movie ends with a Christmas song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's like four Christmas songs in it. There's a Santa, a guy in a Santa hat. I don't know. It's like, what do you want from me? I watched, uh, what's his name? Andrew Callahan's new movie, This Place Rules. Channel Andrew, 5. Oh, guy. I know no gas, is. no I, breaks. I haven't, uh, I haven't watched it. Yeah. It's like a documentary, right? Yeah, it's kind of like an extended form of his uh, usual bits was that an hbo thing yeah hbo max produced by tim and eric Mm. um Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it it was i don't know it was Uh, all right it was almost like over it was over before i kind of realized i don't know i did watch it in two sittings the first time i fell asleep because i watched it so late and the second sitting we kind of it was yeah it was just over before i knew it and i was like what is that movie even about i don't know it's Mm. (laughs) i don't know it's great i'll always watch his movies you know, yeah. he makes another. It, it just wasn't quite a, what I expected. I was ex- I was expecting something that was not just like a longer form of his YouTube videos. I thought it was going to be like a next level type mm-hmm. of thing. Maybe it was because he kind of did an interview to it, and there was some there was some wild characters on it. I mean, I, I don't. don't I, I have a theory that he's not quite there yet. Like mm. his his talent is just like the rawness of what he captures and the chaos of it. And then they just kind of throw it together and it's one situation. So I don't know that he and his team are necessarily at a place where they can like put something more narrative or something grander together. Like I think they definitely, I think Tim and Eric, when they came in, they just let him do his thing. Yeah. And his for team sure. still edited. Cause I don't like, you know, all the zooms all the digital zooms where they zoom in on people's faces. It's super goofy. Mm hmm. Those were the same as they always have been. Yeah. And I feel like only they know how to do the zoom properly. Yeah, Anyways. I, I believe it. Yeah. So that's my recommendation. <laughs> Just to not watch that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you won't. Yeah, yeah. If you guys watch it, let me know. Curious what you think of it. I'll probably watch it. Yeah. I'd, I'd just I, watch I, it. I watched a show called Fleischman is in trouble. Have you heard of this? Heard of it. It was really good. Nice. It cool, was, cool, um, cool, cool. It was with uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. Um, and he plays a dad. 
and he, he's, he's like going through a divorce and stuff and it's very like adult drama y and stuff but it's you know because it's uh, it's not hbo what is it i think it was like fx or something i watched it on disney plus anyways it's um but like the cinematography and the way it's shot and everything it's like it's pretty elevated and, and cool and it kind of jumps around from different perspectives and it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Would you say? It's really, really good. <laughs> I would. Cool. Yeah. I watched all eight episodes in like a day. Nice. Has it been renewed? I don't know if it's, no, I think it might be an isolated like mini series. Oh, Because okay. it was based off of a book. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> during New Year's, we tried watching a little bit of Dick Clark's and what's it called? Rock and Eve. Rock and Eve. Rock and Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. that, so we were in Point Roberts. So we were across the border in the U.S. of A. And I wanted to put that on just to kind of gauge. We're playing a, a, a game and I wanted to gauge when it was New Year's. So we threw that on. It was depressing as hell. It's like you yeah. get like one minute of at New York, like in the Times Square. Everybody's stoked. Uh, great vibe. And then that screen goes small. It minimizes to the top corner. And then you just get like all the bad news with a, like taking up a majority of the screen. What? So it'd be like botched Brazilian, Braz Brazilian butt lifts and war and say that 10 times fast. BBL. <laughs> I should have just said BBL. <laughs> and yeah. It was just like, Oh my God, turn that off. That's like, this is terrible right now. I don't, yeah, so. Wait, wait. So they just run the news. I don't even know if it was uh, Dick what, Clark's, Dick Rock Clark's and New Eve. Rock and Eve. Is that Rock it really and rolls off the yeah, tongue, huh? Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and Eve. New Year's Rock and Eve, right? He, I de he dead. Why is his name still on it? Because ah, it's like it's like a yeah, trademark it's a show. Yeah, it's yeah. A legacy. I think Ryan Seacrest wants to uh, take that over, though. Well, he's he's the guy now, right? Yeah, like he hosts it. Um, yeah, does he yeah. want the title though? I'm sure. Yeah, he, he sees that crest and he goes for it. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest, super sick New Year's Eve. And he's just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> super sick. It's just a picture of Jason every year. No, 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 no. Dave, you get any notable presents for Christmas? You get anything uh, nice? Do you have anything? Fuck. We talked nice about, uh, Dave. <laughs> we talked about <laughs> best Christmas gifts we've given, best Christmas gifts we've received. This year it was all about, um, my nephew, who's like a year and a half almost. I mean, closer to two now. And so we all gave him Thomas the Tank Engine related gifts because he loves Thomas the Tank Engine. Did you um, watch Bullet Train? <laughs> I actually started watching Bullet Train two days ago and I turned it off. There's a Thomas. Yeah, there's a few references. There's a few references. I Thomas. didn't hate it. I just was not that into it in the moment. But um, yeah, he's really into Santa, which I don't really get because he's <laughs> so little that it's like hmm, what? Child <laughs> yeah, there's no. like kids in the Santa. No, no, but so like a weird man. No, like a <laughs> one like magical story. Okay, listen. But a, <laughs> man who like brings gifts a one and year. a half year old's comprehension of what santa is or could be and like they didn't really tell him much about it they just showed him like visuals of santa and he lost his mind he just yeah, something part, about him of course <laughs> how, <laughs> no, can you, how can you tell <laughs> like, mm, yes i quite like this santa figure because uh, yes. now anytime he sees a santa a like fella. a little santa figurine or anything he points in he goes santa santa, santa. He, gets, <laughs> he gets really excited or he's saying fanta yeah <laughs> <laughs> Fanta, Fanta, Fanta. Yum, yum, yum. I told you the Fanta fun fact before, right? Mm. This could be the fun fact of the day if we want. Okay. Fanta. Oh, sorry. I, I, I. Oh, God. <laughs> that seemed on purpose. That seemed no, I, premeditated. It, I was getting it ready. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fanta was designed by Coca Cola so they could sell a product to the Nazis while during World War II. Why? Because they didn't. <laughs> They didn't want to look like they were selling Coca-Cola to the enemies because they're oh, an American company. So they I invented see. Fanta as a new product that didn't seem affiliated with them. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. sorry, what? Your one and a half year old? Yeah, he loves Fanta Claus. Matthew. <laughs> Fanta Claus. Uh, he loves yeah. Fanta. <laughs> so I gave him a few Thomas the Tank Engine things, toys that could go on the track, and I gave him a few books and... And that was, I don't know, I didn't really, we didn't really do that many gifts amongst the family. We were kind of like, nah, let's just do baby gifts. What was the best gift you, best gift you, you gave someone? Uh, it was either the Thomas the Tank Engine toys or uh, I gave my dad a new beater. What? <laughs> <laughs> 
like a Jesus Christ the no, top the no. tank top. I didn't even know what the term meant, but it's the uh, my dad's a drummer. Okay, and you know on the bass drum the part that hits the bass drum. Mm. It's like you can actually buy different like, and the guy called it a beater. Mm. So I had I didn't know that. I and I play the drums a little bit, but I didn't know that. Um, he seemed to like that. I think he got his dad a flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> I got him a, a excellent a massage from me. <laughs> what? No, dang. Uh, does your yeah. dad ever? Your dad's a chiropractor. Does he ever he does. do work on you? Does he crack your shit? Yeah, yeah. He has over the years. What? What does he do? It? Does he need to be on like the proper table, does, or do you just like get uh, on the floor and you're like, Dad, crack me? No, no. He it, says, Dad, give me a beater. It, <laughs> it, it generally needs to be on a proper table. He has sort of um, a more portable table that he has at home. But the one at his office is a lot better because it like, you know, raises electrically and it's a lot more, it's like super heavy and good. But, you know, you can, you can get it done on a, on a coffee table if you have to or something. Like, the floor is hard because he has to be able to get in under you to kind of like <laughs> okay. roll you and manipulate, manipulate okay. your body. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm coming in next Christmas. Yeah, he, he'd adjust you. You guys ever seen the ring, ring dinger? Excuse me. You guys, have you seen the ring dinger? I don't, uh, know what that means. I don't think so. Okay, on YouTube, type in the ring dinger. Right now? Do it. Okay. And uh, actually, look up Jack Harlow does the ring dinger. Oh, yes, this is how I've seen some this. Some chiropractor, I think yeah. in Texas, oh, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got this... Um, this is a nine-minute clip. Yeah, just skim through I it a little bit. Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Dustin. We got Jack yeah, yeah. in here with us this morning, and this is a Saturday morning... I don't All right, turn that down, turn that down. Just skim through it a little bit. Okay. So basically, he goes through a bunch of um, procedures here. Uh -huh. He has like this gun. He kind of he shoots at your back. Uh -huh. uh, gets the he patient shoots to kinda, all over your back. He shoots all, back shots, basically, <laughs> as soon as you walk in. Uh -huh. um, and then his, his big move, his finisher, is the ring dinger, where uh -huh. he gets you to lie on a table. And you, he places these columns, like these bars like they must be made of steel or something on either side of your hip, like right above your hip bone. So you're kind of locked in. Mm. Uh -huh. Then he raises up your, your feet. So your knees are at a, at like a 90 degree angle. Okay. Yeah. I'm saying this. And then he takes a towel, he wraps it around your neck and tells you to relax, breathe through your nose and clench your teeth. And then on the count of three, he yanks upwards on your spine using that towel and like, I guess just completely like decompresses, un, un, yeah, decompresses your spine. Did you, did you just get the moment there? No, it's, I, I can't seem to find it. Did you just cool, cool, cool me, Jason? Mm -hmm. That sound was terribly distorted. What <laughs> I don't know what happened. happened. Oh, here it is. I got it. Yeah, yeah, here, here. yeah. Show Jason. Jason, I'm scared to turn my computer because this is what's recording. Okay. All right. Maybe not. Here we go. Play the sound, play the sound. Oh, whoa, wait. Okay, oh, I got to back it up. Okay, this is Jack Thank Harlow you. getting the ring dinger. Where you lift your... Oh! Oh, 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 my God. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. You kept that all the way down. Dude, I love... I, my favorite part is that they're mm, uncut, nope. and you're just getting the, the raw kind of take on... And the, the fact that he had a celebrity come in there and get it. Mm -hmm. I wonder... I would love to have Jack Harlow come on the pod. And let's ask him how he's doing post ring dinger. Post ding. Post ding. <laughs> Jack Harlow, if you're watching, which we all know you are. Yo, he's a huge chother. Yeah. Every week <laughs> in the uh, in the speak pipe, he's leaving us a message. Yeah. Speakpipe.com. He goes by Big Al. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of speak pipe, we we've got a we got a handful of new ones. Can I uh, first show you guys my favorite gift that I gave to no, um, Brooke? Is it a ring dinger? <laughs> <laughs> so, look, he does we're it. We're gonna do a live demonstration. Fucked by the way, like. The, that can't be good for you. I I know, right? But so, man, a lot of the people who get it though, they swear by it. They come back and get it over and over again. And it's weird though, because they're like, "Oh my god, I feel instantly better." And then I love Jack's reaction. He's like, "Oh my god, get me out of here!" Yeah. <laughs> but then three minutes later, he's like, "Oh yeah, I feel good." I think you might be hurting in that video. It's hard to tell. It's yeah. I don't know. I guess it can work. I don't know. Uh, some people have like chronic pain. They come in there. Yeah, they get the ring ding, and then. They're cured. It just seems risky. <laughs> Definitely. I, I would do it once. I don't, I don't mess with it. Let's get a sponsor. Let's get the, what's his name? Doc, I don't know. I don't Dr. Know. This podcast is brought to you by the ring mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Oh! Use 15% off. 
<laughs> oh god, I love the ring dinger. Um, oh, and then he also calls like there's a whole like fetish of there's a community of people who watch people getting their backs cracked and bones mm-hmm, cracked mm-hmm. on YouTube, mm-hmm. and uh, he calls his audience crack addicts. Oh yeah, my dad's made that joke before. My dad's favorite joke he ever made was there was a time my sister was a, like a sales doing sales for uh, Coca Cola, and. Or uh, Fanta. <laughs> and he sent out a Christmas card that year and in the Christmas card he did a little write up about the family and he goes um, well and I, I sell crack and my daughter sells coke <laughs> he just thought that was the funniest that is actually pretty funny yeah my daughter sells Fanta okay so this is what you got Brooke yeah so um, I may have brought up this show before on the podcast but my favorite podcast is Kill Tony mm-hmm. it's a live show Right now, it started in L.A. at the Comedy Store, and now they've moved to Austin, Texas, but they'll also travel around the world and through Canada, and they do live shows. But it's a live show, and the idea is that the hosts on stage are in a comedy room, a theater of sorts, a venue, and they have the bucket of destiny on the on the table, and they pull out one name at a time, and could be anybody that comes out of the bucket. They have to do 60 seconds of stand-up comedy. And then after they do an interview with the host and it's hilarious because you never know what you're going to get. could be like a, a, a comedy pro veteran or it could be um, someone who's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have a live band too. And they have regulars and there's this one regular, his name's Will Montgomery. Have you got, do you guys know this guy? Mm-mm. No. Okay. Um, and he's 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 pretty funny. He's he's an interesting character for sure. Like his his whole shtick is pretty funny. He does a lot of yelling on stage, a lot of swearing at people. Uh, he used to be pretty heavily addicted to coke, and he was an alcoholic, and now he's sober and he's shaped up, and now he's opening for Joe Rogan and Tony Hinchcliffe. And anyways, he's on cameo. And I got my first cameo ever for Brooke. <laughs> mm. You got it for Brooke? I got it for Brooke. Seems I thought this was a gift for you. No, we because we both, well, well I mean, yeah, it's yeah. for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's for yeah. all of us. Yeah, yeah. This is really a gift it's for a you group. guys and all the chothers out there yeah. now. <laughs> but I paid $70 for a cameo and this guy's just getting booked up like crazy. You guys want to watch the cameo? Yeah. Right, yeah. Here we go. Brooke, dear God, nice to finally be talking with your ass. Brooke. If you're asking yourself, do I sound, do I appear to have under the weather, you'd be very correct. Okay, Brooke, I made a very poor decision. A couple nights ago, I went to a very exclusive super spreader event inside of a water park. Kevin Bacon was actually letting everybody inside, coughing in everybody's face. Brooke, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't even really like tremors all that much. And now I'm sick as shit. So, Brooke, I pray to God you're doing better than me. And you know what? I think you are because it's Christmas. Brooke, holy shit, Merry Christmas. Brooke, I'm here to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Also, yo man, Matt, sure as shit, here to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Brooke, by the way, next time you see Matt, please give his ass a big hug and an open mouth kiss, okay? These things are $2,500 freaking dollars right now, Brooke. I didn't really want to get into it. But the night before I went to that super spreader thing, I took what I thought was a vial of liquid GHB, which I happen to love. It helps me socialize in nightclub settings. Sadly, Brooke, turned out to be a vial of liquid Xanax. I pretty much immediately blacked out. I ended up boarding an Amtrak train. Made my way up to the very front of the Amtrak, obviously the captain's quarters. And Brooke, I don't know if you've ever been inside of a captain's quarters around this time of year, but they're extravagant, okay? I mean, it was filled with valuables, breakables. Had who's it's a what's it's a plenty. Had gizmos and gadgets galore, Brooke. I'm kidding. That's from the Little Mermaid song. Uh, Brooke, <laughs> needless to say, I was like a bull in a china shop, okay? I destroyed over $30,000 worth of bullshit in the captain's quarters. So I don't know what I'm going to do. And Brooke, by the way, next time you see Matt's ass, let him know. He's going to be receiving from me to him a notarized letter in the mail tomorrow. Brooke, let Matt know he needs to sign the documents. I didn't want to tell you this, but Matt was the person that sold me that vial of what I thought was liquid GHB. And now I owe Amtrak over 30K. I don't fucking think so. So, Brooke, let Matt know it'll probably only be the next five to ten years of his life. No big deal. I totally appreciate it. It's very awkward, especially around the holidays. Uh, But, Brooke, please have a very Merry Christmas. Very Happy New Year. Uh, and don't worry that you're eating so many beans right now, okay? I get it. It's a part of your diet. Matt gets it. You're farting a lot. Brooke, he likes the smell of your toots, okay? Don't be fucking embarrassed. Brooke, it's all good, and it's good for your 
for your tummy and shit, eating all the beans helps you do do and stuff. So keep up the good work on that. Uh, but Brooke, by the way, I don't know exactly where you live because Matt refused to give me your tax ID number, your social, your address, your phone number. Brooke, normally I'm stealing identities on this thing, but Matt wouldn't budge. Okay, that's how much he loves your ass. That is how loyal he is to your ass, Brooke. So never forget it. Uh, but Brooke, please, y'all have a great uh, Christmas and a very happy new year. Bye. <laughs> That was the longest cameo I've ever heard. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, he's a generous cameoer. Almost three minutes. Yeah, geez. So wait, how did you give him any sort of script? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, all I told him was that I wanted him to tell Brooke that it was okay that she's eaten beans okay. as part of her new diet. Okay. And that uh, it was very important that she know that it's okay. Did you tell him that you like the smell of her farts? No, I oh, didn't okay. say that. Okay. No, you get like basically 80 or 100 characters to mm. write something because you can't waste their time yeah, like yeah. asking them a whole bunch of details. But he, $70, yeah. I think I only really expected like a minute and I got three minutes from him. It was fun. That was good. Yeah, it was good. To, that was my first cameo. It's like a fever dream of a cameo. He kind of <laughs> speaks in a similar rhythm as Trump. <laughs> really? Yeah, because he just kind of talks fast and he's kind of like going a bit in circles and he just says someone's your name a lot like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just there was something to it that was kind of like, like I was like, is he doing a bit? Like, is he doing <laughs> I a think Trump it's thing? just like he. So this guy gets booked like crazy, and he's doing seventy of, of these sometimes in a. Well, sure. I think he splits it up. I think he'll do like thirty in a day. Sure, but he's he's he comes on stage on Kill Tony, and he says, "I'm booked up on cameo. I got seventy of these things to do." And yeah, around Christmas time, I was like, "I'm part of that. I'm one of those." Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's sweet. Yeah, um, Wait, what's we, that accent too? He, he had a wild voice. He's well, little, he's sick. He's from Memphis. Okay. He's a southern. Yeah, yeah. He, he's really funny, though. You got to check it out. Um, if you like to laugh, if you love stand, stand-up comedy, Not if you me. have the ability to <laughs> listen <for> to something <laughs> that's longer than a TikTok, watch Kill Tony. Highly recommend. They came to Vancouver a couple times. Oh, yeah. I'd go. Yeah. Would you go up and do 60 seconds? No. no. God, no. No? No. No, no it's a lose-lose. No, not, I'd have to. It, I'd have to go out there and hone my craft for like two years before I even thought about. The doing thing it. is, you can uh, you can completely bomb the stand up, but mm-hmm. you can nail the interview and redeem yourself. I think I do bad at both. Yeah, lose lose, or you, or you just get chatbot to write you sixty seconds of stand up. <laughs> That's a good call. <laughs> That's yeah. a good. Oh bet. just God. be like, hey, if this is bad, I'm sorry, chatbot Wait, AI j- wrote it. We got to do that. Can can we? Can, does anybody know the link? Chat G. What is it? G B P T. It's it's something for sure. <laughs> uh, chat dot open AI dot com. All right. Well, I'm gonna get that going right now. Yeah, I'm gonna get that going. Writing okay. sixty seconds of stand up while you guys steer this conversation in another direction. Get the speak pipes. You want me to get some pipes? We got like seven. Yahoo! We got like seven in the last week or so. Okay, so this first one is from Sendta. I, oh, I, I get it. Oh, Senta. Is that the Senta that we met in Colorado? Because I gave him that name. And he was like, that's good. It plus, might, it might be. Senta. You ready? Mm-hmm. Ready. What's up, guys? This is Senta here. Uh, that's that's Senta. Sendy Santa. From the eerie Colorado it Halloween is. ride you guys did. Shout yeah. out Matt for hooking me up with that killer nickname. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Well, I was wondering... Uh, when you guys might get uh, Henry Quinney on that podcast, maybe talk about some Age of Empires, maybe some wrenching on some bikes, you know, could be pretty good. But in the spirit of the holidays, I had a question for y'all. Who among you is the naughtiest? <laughs> Who among you is the nicest? I'll be taking notes. I'm going to check that list twice. Ho, ho, ho. Mm. We're fucking done. Wait, what, what was the name? Send to no 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 the <laughs> the person he wants oh us Henry, to, Henry oh, Quinney I, yeah I don't know who that is so. Henry Quinney he works at Pink Bike and oh. he's on their podcast and he oh. does a lot of stuff that that he is one of the world's most interesting people really he's oh, really? probably lived about thirty five lives oh cool he used to work at GMBN mm-hmm. be a presenter there and he brought up Age of Empires he is really that, likes Age of Empires okay I mean like I game had, yeah 
No, like the the time period. Okay, okay, okay. You guys are always talking about these like bike movies where it'll be like Fall of the Seasons number two. So like well, I thought Age of Empires. been one of those. Age of Empires could definitely also be a bike video. I feel Feeding like. Oh, you didn't never heard of Age of Empires? No, I have, but I also thought it could be a bike video. Oh, okay. Uh, Stay a while and listen. I can't talk about Asian empires, but I can hey, talk wait, about sorry, Diablo too. Asian, <laughs> Asian empires. We got the Ming Dynasty. <laughs> <Yeah>. we got- <laughs> all my favorites. That's no, all I no, have. No, no, Genghis I, Khan. I can, oh, okay. You guys know uh, Attila the Hun. Baby, no money. Is it baby? Baby, no money, or is it BB, no money? It's baby. It's baby, no money. Yeah. Is this an Asian empire? <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> no. They had lots of money. Those Asian yeah. empires. Um, he was on Nardwar, which yeah. I got to watch the full thing. But I saw a little clip, uh-huh. and Nardwar asks him. He says, "Is it true? Is it true <laughs> that your uncle in Beirut sent you a copy of Diablo two or something like that?" And he was like, "What? How do you know that? How do you know that?" And I, I just wondered. Like, you know, it's classic. Why, how did you get this information? Yeah. No, seriously, who did you ask? I never talked about this in an interview before. And I was like, is this real? Because sometimes I wonder, are the artists just, like, playing the game to, like, help Nardwar out? Like, how did you, how'd you know this, man? No. How'd you Because know? I feel like if I was, I mean, who knows what it's really like to have that information just suddenly exposed like that. But I would just be like, okay, I guess you could talk to a family member. I guess he... Yeah, that's all you could really do is you just talk to someone and then he's like, oh, is there a family member? Like you talk yeah. to the manager, is there someone I could reach out to? Because if someone asked me to help friends out with an interview, so if Nardbar asked me, I would be like, oh yeah, here, here's a bunch of contacts. Go mm-hmm. nuts, right? Yeah, I, I think agree. I think the reaction's genuine. It's like when you asked me about the salmon. Because in my mind, I couldn't remember who even knew that. Like, okay. I was like, who would you have e- had to talk to? Like, were you talking to someone I went to grade six with? Like, you know what I mean? So that kind of blew my mind. So I feel like I have insight and I don't, these people now people kind of know Nardwar, but like five or 10 years ago, he was still less known amongst yeah, a lot of the yeah, bigger artists yeah. and you were, he was still getting those reactions. Well, well, as an armchair critic, it's easy to be like, Oh, come on. You just, you just ask someone. But yeah, when you're in the hot seat mm-hmm. being asked just a question or something that you've completely forgotten about. Yeah. And people, mind blown. people get really generic questions 99% of the time from interviewers, right? Interviewers are just like, yeah. which superhero would win in a fight? Like, <laughs> it's like the dumbest shit. Oh, hell no. No. But uh, yeah, he, they started talking about Diablo 2. And mm-hmm. I was like, all right, we got to have baby no money on. We're going to talk about Diablo 2. Yeah. That would be great. We'd love to. Um, You'd love to talk about Diablo 2? No. Because we could. I could I could go on. No. I'd rather talk pl- about more Asian empires. Can I just tell you guys that I beat I beat hell. I beat mm-hmm. I, like I beat the game. There's still a nice. lot more. And yeah. where, where, Bro- yeah. Brooke told me that Diablo 2 is the worst thing that happened to her. Why? That's fair. because I'm playing it constantly oh. when I can. Right. Well she just needs to get into it too, <laughs> yeah. clearly. <laughs> Diablo three is co op, I think. You can do like a co op adventure. I'm pretty sure. Uh, di- uh, yeah, but who cares about Diablo three and Diablo four? It's all about Diablo two. <laughs> Should we answer the second part of the question? Oh yeah, yeah. Who's naughty and nice? Um, I think I think we're all a bit both. Who's Who nice? naughty? Like he said, kind of like sexually too. I was like, oh, yeah, I don't yeah. Know. I, don't know. I feel like he's kink shaming us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if you're nice, you're like yeah, whatever. Um, I'm gonna go with Jason's the nicest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is he? I don't know. It's a facade. They ask you how you are. Nobody's really that nice. Nobody's. No, everyone's an asshole. Yeah, we're all just kind of on the naughty list there, I think. All right, moving on. Next one is from Rob. I just want to say hello to all the chudders out there. And also as a question, I was wondering, since you guys use so much music in your videos, which is oftentimes copyrighted, how do you go about <laughs> using that in a YouTube video in terms of like monetization and paying for stuff uh, a lot of the music that we use isn't copyrighted we're, we're ambassadors for musicbed.com so we get a lot of music great music there mm-hmm. we're in bed with them for sure mm-hmm. um and there are there are some songs on that like even just the other day jason you were like what how did you use that song i hopefully it doesn't get tagged but mm-hmm. it was on musicbed mm-hmm. what was it it was 
dance dancing to the beat dancing i think to the beat yeah something like that yeah which i've heard in like tv shows and commercials so i was like oh that's a that's a, a i don't know what you'd call it yeah <laughs> all the, songs, the answer is we either license it through a service like music bed or in some cases we like know or reach out to the artist the artist right? that's one of the answers or in some cases a lot of the music we use is lo-fi like hip-hop which is derivatives of old music that's just sampled mm-hmm. so the people who make that music don't even own the samples in the first place so they can't put it into the copyright id system and then we use it and there's just this like whole gray area of music copyright yeah and every so often you still get flagged and you get fucked yeah 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 exactly yeah um there's a whole bunch of myths around how youtube copyright works and if you get a certain amount of copyright strikes that your channel gets deleted and all that, you can get as many flags mm-hmm. as they can give you forever. Like when you get a flag, it doesn't mean that you're saying, anyways, this is boring YouTube they, talk. But YouTube doesn't mind because they just, they take their cut and then the, they just give the rest of the cut to whoever owns the copyright on the music. Exactly. So yeah, it's I, not, it's no I, skin off their nose. Like Bazinga. Unless you, yeah, yeah anyway, this is boring YouTube talk. No, people Nobody like it. Cares. Anyways, okay, next one is from <laughs> Moses Hart. Mahalo, my dudes. Mahalo. This is Moses calling in from Spokane. On the Christmas episode, Matt said to uh, leave a leave a speak pipe and shout out your Instagram. So that is what I'm doing. <laughs> you can follow me at Moses underscore underscore heart on Instagram. And I am the eighth best unicyclist in the whole world. What? I uh, got eighth placed at the unicycle world championships in France last summer. So go check that out if you want. And Matt, if you send me a DM, if you want to send me stickers, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm open to that. All right. Peace. All right, I'm, I'm, Moses the Hart. Here we best go. <laughs> unicyclist in the world. What a claim! Quit bragging. That's so sick. That's like cooler <laughs> than being number one for some reason because it's so it's like an obscure thing and then an obscure number. Oh, fire, bro! That's actually uh, pretty cool. I, I'm checking yeah, it out. Cool. Checking the gram cool. out. So what eighth place? But what's the the competition? Probably some sort of unicycle competition, like an obstacle course, or I would hope so. Maybe trick uh, battle. Shit, I don't know. Exactly. That was a big claim, but his Instagram bio says half decent street unicyclist. Yeah, eighth place He's is humble. half decent. I would say humble on the in the bio. <laughs> um, it was at eight. You yeah. know, I, <laughs> we've had we we've had uh, on our list of videos to make learning how to unicycle mm-hmm. and just like do that for a week straight. I still want to do that. I've always wanted, it's on my bucket list. Moses, so, get, get out here. Yeah, Moses, come on out. Let's make a video. Teach me how to uh, ride a He's unicycle. Close. All the expenses are on you. Um, <laughs> I would say if anyone else wants to do a similar sort of speak pipe, uh, also ask us a question. It was kind of a dead end there. He did ask a question. He said, also, if you'd like to slide into my DM, send me stickers, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. All right. Uh, got- I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll DM him. Okay. I'm going to play the next one from Bennett. Hey boys, it's Bennett, one of your many Aussie fans here. I'm off to Vancouver and Whistler for the first time this summer. Any chance I can get your top tips for things to do or see while I'm there. Can be bike related or not. Up to you. Love the podcast. Come on down to Australia sometime and I'll fire up the barbie for you. See you, boys. Am I crazy or did that sound like a fake Australian accent? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was real. All right. What was the question? Uh, he wants travel tips for Whistler in the summer. Okay. Well, Whistler. Whistler. First tip. Whistler bike park. Google it. <laughs> um, you gotta go to the Whistler bike park. You gotta go shred the nerd. What's... Nah. <laughs> you gotta kidding. do... I don't even know. Like, <laughs> wow, we have a lot to say, huh? It's hard though. Like, yeah, everything's fun. Like, you're it's not just gonna, so nice there. It's so, yeah, just go enjoy it. I would say, meet people. Okay, I've ride, put some thought into this. Though. Ride around the tr- like, ride around like the trail system. Like, they get Are around on the bike. Are you? Dumb? You mean the valley trail? Is that what they call it? Yeah. Just like the paved. Yeah, the valley trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's great. It's great. And then you go to the lakes. There's a bunch go of to lakes. The lakes. Go go to Garfs. If you want to go to Garf, have a barf. It smells like farts in there. Yeah. Go to Sushi Village. Sushi Village. Do a monkey shot. Break your neck. 
Oh yeah, that video is hilarious with that girl. Okay, if you if you're traveling to Canada and you want to make it to Whistler, you either have a couple you have a couple ways to get there. You could take a shuttle, uh, mm-hmm. like what's it called the Epic, Epic rides. Shuttles, Epic Rides. Well, there's tons. You can take like a ton of yeah, things. and they're fairly cheap, and then you don't need the car to get from Vancouver to Whistler. So mm-hmm. get on. Mm-hmm. You can take a Greyhound, but then you need to stuff your bike underneath the mm-hmm. lower compartment, which is a bit tight. Anyways, take that. Um, and then save all your money so that you can spend it all in Whistler because it's very expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, real expensive. Mm-hmm. Shit adds up. Um, what else? If you can, mm, let's see. I don't want to like, I don't want to give all the hot tips and piss off the locals, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say something. I was like, no, I can't, we can't blow that up. It's a tourist destination. Yeah, it is. A tourist. Yeah, like but we know point. some of the secret, uh, oh. you know, the secrets. You'll have to tell me off mic. I've said too much. <laughs> Nah, just go have fun. Like it's it, how do you have a bad time in Whistler? Like it's Disneyland. No. Go to a uh, purebred, eat a muffin. Yeah, a croissant. Mm. Yeah, purebred. Mm. Go to Splits Burger. Eat a Splits Burger. Mm. Creek yeah. bread. Creek bread. We've Pizza. actually talked about all this in Haley's podcast. Did we? Yeah, we. Oh yeah, at that the is very a good end, point. I think we we went through oh, all yeah. the like best things yeah. to do in Whistler. I wasn't there, so Aussie man, you should go listen to the Haley podcast. We did mm-hmm. talk about it. Oi, oi, and, and the Ollie one. We probably talked about. Some Whistler things. Go track down Ollie Jones. All right. Now we will move on to a regular <laughs> contributor. A regular each other. Big Al. Uh, listed this time as Big Boy Al. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Chother gang? I've been uh, thinking about my experience in Whistler throughout my life. <laughs> and I've come to the conclusion that I'm not that big of a fan of cows. I'll give credit where credit is due. Cows? It's good ice cream. Oh, but it's such a long lineup for what is just ice cream. I personally just find myself going down the village stroll and hitting up the Dairy Queen. I love those dip cones. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, what's girl. your guys' opinion on that? Do, are, do you have to go to cows every time you go to Whistler? Do you find you only go to cows when you're with your significant others? Uh, My significant others? Or are you just like a cow fiend? Do you got to suck that utter dry? Let me know, guys. <laughs> See you next week. I believe those are called chudders. <laughs> nice. What? Cow's ice cream? No, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Is it that good even? It's just ice cream. I think it's just normal ice cream. I I flee from lines. So if I see something really busy and, and liney, I'm like, nah. Mm-hmm. It's never worth it. No. Cows is overrated big time. It's just, it's not great ice cream. I mean, go for the, the pecan, you know, the, what's it called? Um, pralines and cream. Oh, pralines. 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 <laughs> this is like when he said vehemently. <laughs> You can say things different ways, Dave. No. It's okay. <laughs> Get I'm the, the pralines and cream. Yeah, exactly. Um, I love pralines and cream. But yeah, no, if you're in Vancouver and you want the best ice cream, go to La Glass. That mm. is the best ice cream. And, is it? Oh, yeah. Where is that again? Oh, yeah, big time. It's gelato, um, though. 16th yeah. Avenue, Kitsilano. Mm. Gelato? Uh, no, Kitsilano. <laughs> <laughs> it's gelato? I think we need it. Kitsilano. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, get the uh, get the praline mm, pralines. These nuts. Mm, get these <laughs> nuts, pralines. You can also go to Rain or Shine. Shout out or Ernest, yeah. but uh, the glass takes the cake every time. Delicious. Pew! And and DQ, he's got a point about the the, yeah, the dip cone. Really good. It is really good. Get yeah. a dilly bar. I'm not sure there's actual ice cream in there, but it's good. No, <laughs> this point is just powder. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Cows is definitely like. It's not, you're not gonna have a bad time. You know what the best part of cows is? Okay, for, this is like super regional, like what we're talking about. But this mm-hmm. is just like the most popular ice cream place in Whistler. Mm-hmm. Massive lineup. Every time you go, when you're about a hundred yards away from it, you start to smell it because you can smell their waffle cones mm-hmm. that they're making. They pump that out there. I thought you were mm-hmm. smelling the ice cream. And I'm like, does it have an odor? <laughs> no, the waffle cones have the odor. And uh, yeah, I think it's the best part. There is the merch. Yeah, the merch is sick. And the cow. Yeah, sure. I guess they have a ceramic cow outside. You mm-hmm. can take a photo with it. Yeah, Just tip it over if you like. But yeah, you, you guys don't seem thrilled by the ice cream talk. Like we could talk about ice cream for like 45 <laughs> minutes. I don't know. I think everyone has like, it's so opinionated. Like it's. I like scream. You like scream. I started making ice cream. We think we've talked about this. Yeah, I saw it had any. I, I know. <laughs> I, you know what? I wanted to make everybody ice cream for Christmas. Uh-huh. And then when you left, you got ice cream. But I just right. didn't didn't have time one of these days though i'll give you guys ice cream perfect we should have an ice cream off favorite flavor it it is pralines and cream is my favorite pralines and cream okay 
I feel like it depends on the on the place. Like if you said rain or shine, I'd go with the honeycomb, whatever crazy flavor. Oh, you fancy. Yeah. You got to wear a monocle while eating that one. Yeah. I don't know. Usually like chocolatey, peanut buttery, caramel thing. Mm. I hate chocolate ice cream. What? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it either. I, I don't know. It kill, like it kills the vibe for me. Much prefer the vanilla. I, I like a light flavor in my ice cream. Not the dark. Plain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I want God. yogurt flavor. Oh, I need ice cream now. Yeah, exactly. One mayonnaise ice cream, please. You guys always have sup- like a, a supply of ice cream in your fridge? No. In your freezer? Definitely not. I'm no. lactose intolerant, so. What? It's yeah. also just horrible for you. <laughs> it oh, is. man. My, um, my I just rotate jars. My mom made uh, a big apple crisp and I, I took it home. And I cooked that was it. my last flavor of ice cream. I swear to God, really? apple crisp ice from cream Ernest? from the glass. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ernest does one. And it's not good. I had some without ice cream. It's great. It, but with ice cream, it's just like <sighs> ten times better. Oh yeah, everything's better with ice cream. The, the lactose free ice cream I bought recently has actually been really good. Yeah, lactose free ice cream can be like delicious. It, like I didn't notice there's, a difference. There's like cookie dough, like mm-hmm. a cookie dough lactose free. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, can you do gelato? What's in gelato? What do you mean? Like, you can. There, they take the lactose out, so it's just that you can make anything with lactose free. Okay. It's not like um, oat milk or something. Oh, okay, okay. It's okay, like okay, actual okay. milk, but they've. It's kind of like decaffeinate, like decaf coffee. Mm. It's the same thing. They just or non-alcoholic <laughs> beer. <laughs> Your hand movement is like a just pluck it. <laughs> hey, you just just yeah. suck it out. Oh, it's like yeah. sucking the venom out of a wound. You know. Oh, God. There's Filipino ice cream and it's thought, cheese flavor. Is that from the Asian Empire? Uh, yeah, I think so. You can get it there. <laughs> um, we have a review. Okay, is it good? Is it from Cow's Ice Cream? It's from <laughs> we just roasted them. It's from Sunday. Hopefully, it's not from Andrew Callahan. I, th- I don't think they're there yet. I don't think they're there yet. But you know, they keep grinding, and uh, episode five hundred, their podcast might not be a piece of shit. Bless their hearts. They're trying their best. All right. So Mr. Parlor said on well, repeat. Ice cream parlor? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he starts asking about Whistler. Uh, the three amigos wax lyrically about life, media, bikes, and all kinds of millennial issues. The what? handsome one, Jason, has a face for podcasts. And when not what? stuttering, he can <laughs> string whole sentences together. I want to note, though, he wrote whole like, like a H-O-L-E. hole, like a, like a butthole. Uh, whole sentences together. The active one, Matt, is both talented and likable. His easygoing vibes keep the oh shit! I screen capped. All right. It and <laughs> wait, wait, just what? Ends. What happened? Yeah. And you it's like the finale of Sopranos. I I, <laughs> uh, the other one, David, doesn't know how to work a computer. Uh, oh, right. oh, he thinks it's pralines. It is pralines. We all. No, he, think, he thought that. it was pralines. No. Yeah, he thought it was pralines. Dave okay, no, no, problems. he he didn't finish writing it. <laughs> so you just hit enter too quick. Yeah, <laughs> really? the active one, Matt, is both talented and likable. His easygoing vibes keep the and then keep the what? <laughs> keep the what? <laughs> keep the what? <laughs> Pop what? No. We'll never know. Oh my god. Uh, so okay, that was not my error, but um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Parlor, if you want to finish that review, you we'll can read DM us or. <laughs> You know, no, you should just it. write another review, but continue on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, I, I got a wait. You're the active one. Yeah, you're you're the what? The ha- oh, Jason's the handsome. I one. I didn't get. I feel like he was working up to shit on me. <laughs> it was like <laughs> no, the handsome was one, the active one, and it was gonna be like the you know, sexiest one. No, you already got handsome. Yeah, but sexy is different. Than yeah, is it? Mm, yes. Oh. All right. Uh, well, it's funny that he said when you're not stuttering, you can string together a, a whole sentence. A whole sentence. I feel like I'm the stutter guy. Yeah, but I like whole sentences. Yeah, it's like sentences sentence. about holes. It's it's deep holes. holes. It's like whole foods. <laughs> <laughs> but like whole foods, like poo. What? I don't know. Well, nice. Thanks for the review. Yeah, thank, wait, how many stars did he give it? Five. Oh, sick. Yeah, you're, you're winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. thanks. Thanks for... Uh, Attempting a, a complete sentence yourself. <laughs> Almost yeah. at it there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. And we're up to 29 ratings now. Wow. And wow, this thing's really taken off. <laughs> we're, we're at episode, what are we at now? 25? 20, I think this is 27. 27. Yeah, 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 leave a review. We'll read it. Ideally, a complete review. It's going to be our champagne podcast soon. 
when, well, I guess we're all different because when we have the number that you, it's your age, like mine will be podcast 30 will be my champagne podcast. Oh, oh, I Jason, didn't think of it that way. Also 30. 30. Yeah, I'm 47. 47. <laughs> <laughs> we're still a ways away. <laughs> Damn, you old. Damn. I should start. Uh, I have a theory that you should never lie and say you're younger because then you just look bad for your age. So I should just lie and say I'm older and people will be like, oh, you look great for 47. <laughs> But then what they if they're just like, cause... oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> they're like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, I'm actually 32. And they're like, what? Uh, I'm not 32. I, I used to be a piece of shit. Um, if you are listening to this podcast, you might all be. Uh, but, uh, see, I told you I'm the stutter guy. I told you. But, that, but, was, but, that, but. Was, that, was, that was staged. <laughs> it was not. Um. You might also be interested in our most recent video that we just put out on Mahalo, my dude. Uh, it basically, we went to Moab and we recreated my dad's VHS tape from 1993, shot for shot. Mm -hmm. And it was a whole lot of fun. We only had like very, very limited time there. Hours. Hours. Yeah. Time. We were there for one night, but we got there in the middle of the day on day one. We, we probably arrived moments after our Moab podcast. The car cast. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah, that was the same day. <laughs> that was so fun. Time's crazy. Doing the podcast in the car. Mm -hmm. The par car pod was good. The highway was not fun. No. <laughs> the drive was actually so stressful. It was very satisfying that our setup actually worked. We had like all the lab yeah. mics and all this, and Jason was hands-free and yeah, 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 not yeah. distracted. And it worked, it worked not at well. all. Yeah, not distracted <laughs> in the slightest. <laughs> well, it all, seemed like it. Although your GoPro died. <laughs> It, that was my GoPro. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Ah, but nobody knows that. Now they know. Damn it. Now they wonder. Now they know why that angle disappeared halfway through the yeah <laughs> the this podcast. Is, this is for the true chothers. But uh, yeah, so then we made it to Moab and we hiked Arches National Park, which was one of the spots that my dad traveled to. Basically, he went with his his friend Chris in '93. I was one years old, and um, yeah, I guess I don't know. This is the only tape that I had in my closet from this eight millimeter camcorder there's nothing else that i found mm. this might be the only tape my dad recorded and <laughs> we like, went there no don't need to <laughs> don't need to record my <laughs> child no, no. <laughs> Please, no. no! and uh i went we went there with our dad cam 1997 dad cam mm -hmm. it's a vhs c and we went with our red komodo and we just went on the same adventures that they went on so we did, we hiked up to Delicate Arch, which was really neat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The difference though was we were in the hail and the rain and there mm -hmm. was like flash flooding happening. Not major, but. Wait, that's what it's happening. called? Delicate Arch? Yeah, Delicate Arch was oh. where we hiked to. Oh, what makes it delicate? Well, I mean, if you just kind of look at it, <laughs> you know. Could fall at any moment. Because of the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we, it, we didn't really have the same experience they had because they hiked during sunset mm. and there was major crowds and we were freezing our asses off. Mm -hmm. The only ones up there. Mm -hmm. And we had our own little moment. New waterfalls forming and stuff from all the rain. It was kind of crazy. We, we had exactly a moment then we were too cold and we're like, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> when I'm watching the video... I'm thinking to myself, why don't we just stay there a little longer? Why don't we just get a couple more shots? But then in the moment, it was pretty brutal. I couldn't feel yeah. my hands. The camera year too, you just getting, getting so destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Destroyed. it was pretty wretched. Yeah, there was a lot of water going into that red. And Jason was in like shorts and a t-shirt. I didn't dress appropriately. He, I yeah. thought we were going to the desert. <laughs> we, we did. But he runs hot, so. Well, he is the sickest, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so we, we got a lot of the same shots on day one hiking and it's super fun just to find the exact spot. So basically I digitized this tape, put it on, threw it on my phone and then we would hold side by side the dad cam and the iPhone looking at his old tape. And yeah, it was just fun. Like, Hey, we're actually here. Look, the bush is the same. Hey, the, that rock is still there. Mm -hmm. It's funny because my dad's footage is actually better quality than ours. What's, well, what's funny, like watching, the video it's like it's so hard to tell sometimes which, which, one's which? unless there's a bike in it or something I'm like well <clears throat> certainly it's this one it looks better it's not yeah that's why i was thinking of like switching you know dave mm -hmm. you, you you told me to 
keep this like I, on the left and the right i put 93 and then on, on the right i put 2022 mm -hmm. so we're just directly comparing footage and i was trying to rev like have the viewer guess which mm -hmm. one was the old one but i was with you it just kind of got confusing so i ended up just going 92 on the left the whole time and yeah, 2022 yeah. on the right keep it simple yeah but yeah it, the, his footage is better i think the eight millimeter tape is high, way higher quality mm. yeah that ha that happened where they made the cameras smaller so they made the tapes smaller a lot of the times but quality actually went down it's kind of like the jump to digital photo cameras when they first came out from the film was like if you see any photos from like the year 2000 from the year <laughs> 2000 everything looks like dog shit that was on a digital camera right 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 it's like three megapixels it's so bad yeah 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 and then on day two, we went to Slick Rock, but we had so little time because we had to make it to Pit Viper in Salt Lake City. So mm -hmm. Jason and Dave left, and then Kaz and I rode the first kilometer of Slick Rock, and we just had our own little time. I had a piece of linkage missing, or had a bolt for my linkage missing on my bike, so right. I couldn't really ride it too aggressively. So I only managed a few shots. It was like really sketchy for me to ride a bike that day, sadly. But... Yeah, we did it. We matched a bunch of shots. There was one shot that we couldn't match. Um, and it's this sign that says, welcome to Moab, site of the world's greatest dump. I totally butchered that. Yeah, I have it. <laughs> Moab City Dump, America's most scenic dump. Scenic. That's such a hard thing to remember. <laughs> and what she means about a dump. We were right. The Slick Rock Trail is right by the dump. So I tried to find this sign and I couldn't find it anywhere. And we spoke to a park ranger in the booth when we drove into the uh, park and he immediately recognized the sign on my phone. And he said that we, they lost it to Alaska like 15 years ago or something. He said he directly blamed Sarah Palin for, <laughs> yeah. for taking away that, that title. But now Moab is the world's second most scenic, scenic dump, I suppose. I wonder who's the eighth. That's such, <laughs> a, that's such a weird thing to lose. Like, how do you, you just like take down the sign? Like, that, there'd be cost to someone else being like, no, 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 we got the, like, I'd just be like, fuck, fuck off. Like Dude, how we <laughs> that sign must still exist. It's got to exist. I don't think they would take, tear it down. Well, then why is it not there anymore? I feel like it's in someone's basement or it's oh. in a... It's yeah, just yeah. some building somewhere. Seems, like some seems big place. to be in a basement. I hope the video does well. I And I hope people in Moab enjoy it mm -hmm. and they get a kick out of seeing how it used to look and how it looks now, like all these well, shots. It's, it's been a popular destination for years. I feel like a lot of people probably watching will have those like have those nostalgic kind of hits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and be like, whoa, it was that way back then and now. And they've, yeah, it's a cool place. We got to go back. Yeah, we have to go back. I would really love to go back because... <laughs> Excuse me. Noob. I'm a noob for what? sneezing, <laughs> the bruh. Nope. I knew I had like one second nope. to do a sound, and it was just the closest one. Bruh, bruh, bruh. wrong. <laughs> oh, God, geez. Maybe you can chill the hell out for like a second. <laughs> then maybe I can focus on. Some, then maybe I can focus on some shit. You, know? you stupid. We're just yelling at each other through sounds. <laughs> Can't tell who's playing what. What's happening? This is a mess. <laughs> Um, yeah, that the hell is it talking about? Let's go to uh, <laughs> Moab. Let's learn how to unicycle. Oh, go yeah, back Moab. To Moab. yeah, let's go back to Moab because I'm totally yeah. unsatisfied with how much of that trail we rode. Yeah, it'd be yeah. Really great. There's like the the portal trail too, the one that's like the classic YouTuber mm -hmm. on the edge GoPro angle thumbnail and the whole enchilada. Yeah, but uh, it's cool because if this video does well, it could mm -hmm. lead us to a part two because there's a whole bunch of shots that are actually arguably uh, upon reflection the best shots that we kind of missed mm. with they're like the actual biking ones we got a couple bike shots but because of my whole linkage thing we couldn't really ride it too hard and we were so short on time but yeah let's go back and it, maybe uh maybe we could have my uh, dad join if we can figure it out figure out all the timing that'd be cool maybe we turn it into a 2000 kilometer bike packing journey oh god <laughs> Sorry, mile, hammocks, fun yeah. stuff. I'll like take, I'll take like the plane. You, like you ride, <laughs> yeah. ride there. Well, are we going to go bikepacking again? 
I've been thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm super down. I'm I thinking, I kind of want a Farley. Have you guys? I want to track Farley. Ooh. You might be alone. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I, I like the look of that bike, especially after the snow ride. I was like, oh, maybe we should have done fat bikes. Well, like, everybody was chirping us in the comments, not riding fat bikes. Yeah, but we don't have fat bikes. Yeah, no one rides fat bikes like, here. Nobody realizes. Yeah. Also, it's just such a specific bike to, for like the one week a year it snows. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like, it, why would it would be that? so useless. Is yeah. a Farley a fat bike? Sorry. Yes. Is it named after Chris Farley? It's, it's not. Not. Because he's fat. I know. Was fat. And he's also Used to a be. Midwestern and guy, isn't he? I don't he? know. He's definitely we, was from somewhere. We should have someone from Trek on the podcast ask him these questions. <laughs> yeah, they have, they have some eccentric names. but um, He's from Wisconsin. Yeah, that's why I was pretty sure. Yeah. Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, really? Wait, actually, is it named after him? I've, Shit. Well, it's probably a is. fat bike named the Farley, and he's from <laughs> the home of track right, bikes. Right, it must be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, boys, another mystery solved. Wait, hold up. I, I, yeah, I don't know why I dismissed it so quickly. I just thought, I no, just, it couldn't be. Same. I would have thought it was like a designer or like, I don't know. <clears throat> oh, I know nothing. Uh -oh. Number one bullshit guy. Trek settles lawsuit over Farley fat bike name. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Foundation run by the family of Chris Farley believed that Trek was capitalizing on the late comedian's name. There you go. <gasps> this is juicy. And they weren't? Uh, oh, I, I don't know. I don't have time to read this. Oh, read article. it. You want me to read it? Uh, can you get AI to read it? Oh, yeah, AI. I got to get the stand-up comedy ready. Yeah, yeah. Give us the cliff notes. According to a lawsuit filed by the family of Chris Farley, the Wisconsin bicycle maker intentionally named the bike line after the late comedian into, in order to profit from his brand. In 2017, Make Him Smile reportedly run by Kevin Farley, Chris's brother, filed a $10 million lawsuit. Um, they chose the brand name to welcome and encourage potential customers and the bike industry generally to immediately associate their fat bikes with one of, the fam one of their favorite famous fat and loud comedians. The lawsuit states, Trek executives knew exactly what they were doing. Hmm. So what happened? Uh, it sounds like they they settled. Oh. So usually when you settle, it just kind of gets done in the background and the details aren't released. Cool. Well, anyways, <laughs> yeah. I would love okay. a Farley. Maybe I'll throw a sticker over the name. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to go bike packing again. We were, we were kind of reflecting on, like Brooke and I were reflecting on best moments of last year. And she brought up uh, her and I bike packing main Island, mm -hmm. hitting the ferries and taking e-bikes and doing some camping, hammock camping. And it was really sweet. It was really fun. And uh, if I'm honest, it's probably when I'm like the most happy is out there camping and just, just living on whatever's on your bike or in the car. Yeah. It's way better. It's fun. I really like it. And, um, I want to do that more. I was wondering, I, w I watched this series on Apple called the long way round mm -hmm. down Same. and up mm -hmm. you've seen it dave mm -hmm. with you and mcgregor mm -hmm. they do motorcycle bike packing okay, like cool. across the world like fully around the world it's pretty wild and then they've done north to south of the world and then i just finished the long way up which was south to north of the world mm -hmm. and they did it on electric motorbikes which and was their biggest pain in the ass which was not very smart <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You're going through like third world countries on electric it bikes was, yeah. or second world but um anyway i was like wait could you do it on e-bikes where you would do the distance on the e-bike, charge along the way. It's not, it doesn't take that long to charge an e-bike compared to a motorbike. And like, kind of like camp in spots and then pedal from those spots and do these trail rides, come back to camp and ride and not be so fatigued. Mm -hmm. Because that's a big thing with bikepacking. You're carrying, especially when you're filming it, you're carrying so much gear that you're like cooked a lot of the time. Well, we also carry the camera gear, which is a pain that's in the ass. It's yeah, that's so hard to get Yeah, it's so hard to get around it. Exactly. And I'm like, and all these beans that I carry. <laughs> I was looking for that bean sound. Yeah, me too. Oh, here it is. That would be lovely. Nope, that's not it. They bugging, bro. What, bro? Bro. Bro. Let it play. She made fucking beans. <laughs> I meant Guys, I've been looking forward to telling the bean story with Brooke for a couple months now, like her eating beans, and I was planning on playing that sound once and for all, and I totally forgot. Thank you, Jason, for bringing back <laughs> that moment. 
I forgot to shorten it. Anyway, um, I would love to do electric bike packing. Yeah, well, this, that's what Brooke and I did. We went back to Main Island camping, and mm-hmm. they have an outlet there. So we just charged it. Exactly. And we charged it on the ferry and all that. And then also with those Goal Zero things, mm-hmm. the those batteries, you could get a solar panel, mm-hmm. and you could strap it on your back or, like, on the bike. And I'm thinking you could charge throughout the day it's a little risky right because it might be cloudy and also those things take Mm. forever to charge but Mm. it's an option it's and the in the worst case scenario you just ride your bike that doesn't have exactly you're not like completely screwed Mm -hmm. so that was my idea i think we should dave take dave bike packing (sighs) yeah dave likes electric bikes yeah we should take him bike packing all right man that video has got to come out soon we took dave mountain biking it was supposed Mm. to come out last month but uh we had to rearrange it for uh when is it coming uh, our out clients, now? Uh, schedule. What, when is it coming like, out now? In a week or two. Really? Yeah. Yeah, oh. it's supposed to be like January 14, oh. something 18. like that. 18? Okay. Stay yeah. tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. I'll Dave's finally be a, biking. I'll finally be a star. We did it in the style of uh, like our skiing is easy videos, if you know that on Mahal, my dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like whatever is easy videos. We got to do unicycling is easy. Sure. Unis- <laughs> we got to. <laughs> Electric gotta do- unicycle bike pack yes. is easy. <laughs> Hey guys, I have the stand up. You want me to read it? Oh yeah. Okay, so it. in chat uh GBT or the the link to this is chat.openai.com slash chat. Anyways, I typed in write me sixty seconds of stand up comedy. Ready? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it says the, the chat says, Okay, here's quick stand here's a quick stand up routine for you. Here we here we go. Hey everyone, how's it going tonight? Good. Woo! Hold on. Get the cheer. We got to do yeah, the get some effect. sound prompts. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, we got to pretend this is the number eight live podcast in the country. Thanks, hey everyone, how's it going tonight? All right, good to be here. I just came back from the grocery store, and let me tell you, it was a disaster. I forgot my <laughs> hold for <laughs> hold for applause. Oh, you're not supposed to say that out loud. I forgot my face mask, and the security guard wouldn't let me in. I mean, seriously, how am I supposed to remember everything all the time? (laughs) I've got enough on my mind trying to remember where I left my keys and my phone. And don't even get me started on trying to remember what, remember my wife's birthday. Am I right? All right. Okay. (laughs) I always have to check my calendar for that one. (laughs) But seriously, seriously, all jokes aside. Have you guys noticed that every time you go to the grocery store, they always rearrange everything? I can never find anything. And don't even get me started on the lines, okay? It's like trying to make it as inconvenient as possible. But hey, at least we have online shopping now, right? 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 (laughs) Except now we have to deal with delivery guys who can't find our house. I had one guy calling me asking for directions to my own house. I mean, come on. It's not rocket science. All right. Well, that's all the time I have for tonight. Thanks for having me, folks. Who's your daddy? <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think of that one? How did my six seconds? That was so funny because it was so bad. It was so bad. <laughs> it what? wasn't even jokes. <laughs> it, was like, it was just stating things. It's like, <laughs> grocery stores, am I right? I don't think there was a single punchline there. It wasn't. Oh, man. Oh, man. Chatbot, come on. Should we give it like another prompt? No, nah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. I we'll, think this needs to be we'll a new do- segment. Yeah, it's pretty good. Chatbot 60 second comedy. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I was with uh, Andrew Santos mm-hmm. on the weekend and he was saying that he uses this to come up with his YouTube titles for podcasts. Mm. So the AI just r- reads the transcript of the podcast and Wait, then decides what? on the best. Shut your butt. Just decides mm. on the best title. And he uses or, this exact service? I think so. Ask, wow. ask him. Or he, you can also, I think it might be a different AI, but you mm. can make po- thumbnails. So you mm-hmm. can give it a photo of you, you can give it a photo of whatever, yeah. and it'll just make you a thumbnail. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, he also uses it for YouTube descriptions. So he'll just say like, you know, watch this YouTube video or read the transcript. <laughs> so Andrew's been reading the four hour work week book and uh, <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> really so optimized. Andrew, Andrew's all about working smarter, not harder. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and he was working too hard uh, writing his own descriptions. So he just uses the chat AI that's bot. That's sick. Yeah, that's smart. I love it. It's a nice tool. All right, here. I, <laughs> Except for comedy, <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, another one here. Um, write me an outro for the for for a podcast. Yeah. Or should I do write me an outro for the feeding off me podcast? No, feeding off each other. No, I'll just do write me an outro for a podcast. Yeah, here we go. Wait, I just want to add one little fact about the Trek Farley bike is that they 
uh, resolved the matter amicably. So okay, everyone's happy. That's good. That's good. There's no yeah, bloodbath. All right. Um, it's still writing. It's still writing. Mm-hmm. Oh, it says this is good. Okay, it it asks for a couple like fill in the blanks, and one at the end says sign off message or tagline. Oh, I mm. guess we know. We know what that is. No, 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 no. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. You guys ready to sign off with? Uh, mm-hmm. you, okay. This is an AI sign off live. All right. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Feeding Off Each Other. We hope you enjoyed this conversation and learned something new. Don't forget to follow us on social media and subscribe to the podcast to stay up to date on all future episodes. If you liked what you heard, please give us a rating and review on iTunes. It helps us reach a wider audience and bring more informative and entertaining content to you, the Chothers. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Please subscribe for more great podcasts. <laughs>